Thank you very much. That's very nice. <laughs> you know, one night I'd like to do it with another audience watching. <laughs> well, here we go again. <laughs> this is The Tonight Show. We come to you from... We like to plug Burbank, because yes. Burbank is a nice city. Are you from Burbank? I think it's the first time anybody's been to the show from Burbank. <laughs> it's like being in New York, you know, you don't go to the Empire State Building. How long have you lived in Burbank? Twenty-one years. What do you do? A musician. <laughs> Good. Well, what's wrong with musicians living in Burbank? That's fine. Anyway, Burbank is um, a little older community. Um, How old is it? Well, <laughs> well, for example, when they stop you here for expired plates. Uh, They're, they're usually in your mouth. <laughs> that's, that's the difference. So, I got, an <laughs> I got an offer today I, I'm considering. Uh, Fernando Valenzuela offered to share his hideout with me in Mexico. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, I, I'm getting a little, little weary of... Uh, hearing about myself on, on television. Uh, you, how weary am I? Well, I did not sell nuclear secrets to the Russians, you know. I, uh, I tuned in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood today. And, and Mr. Rogers was saying, Do you know Johnny Carson? Can you say registration sticker? Uh, enough already. Anyway... Speaking about Fernando, I heard just a moment ago, it came over the wire, they agreed to give Fernando a million a year. Pesos. <laughs> I hope he gets back. Yeah. I hope. I think they're going to work that out. Has some good news and bad news. Uh -oh. As you probably know, if you drive at all, the good news is major oil firms have slashed gasoline prices up to eight cents a gallon. And the bad news is many people don't have jobs to drive to. <laughs> You see what the Arco company did? You know who Arco is? Yeah. That's the Atlantic Richfield Company, one of the major uh, oil companies. They no longer are going to accept credit cards. You go in, you've got to either give them gold or fur pelts. <laughs> uh, and they said the deal, it'll save the dealers, they say, about three cents a gallon. But that will probably be passed on to the public. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, let's go to the news and see if Richard and Burton and Elizabeth Taylor are going to live together to try to work the bugs out of their marriage. <laughs> That's kind of a thinking joke. Where is the president now? I saw the news. Is he in Los Angeles? He was in Los Angeles? Yeah, I think he's at the ranch. He's up at this... Uh, it's up, isn't it? Yes. Santa Barbara's up, up, at, the, up at the ranch. <laughs> the mouth doesn't seem to be working. You know where they land when they come in? At Point Magoo. <laughs> which is named after the architect of his economic program, Mr. Magoo. Uh, <laughs> but they were, they were in Los Angeles briefly, and while she was here, Nancy, first lady, did some shopping on Rodeo Drive. And on her way, she stopped at one of those cash machines, you know, in front of home savings, and the bank bounced. <laughs> I say, okay. <laughs> you know who's in the news today you haven't heard about? Amy Carter. Remember the... Amy Carter is returning to Washington this summer to work as a Senate page. Now, finally, we got a foreign policy expert back in government. Uh, actually, she's going to be... She's what they call... She's what they call a gopher. Do you understand that expression? It's just used in show business, I guess other businesses, but it means you... Well, how would you... Go uh, for things. You go for things. You do... Thank you. <laughs> you uh, you kind of run trivial errands. And the only problem is there might be a conflict um, with George Bush. That's right. In the job. <laughs> so, that worked that out. You know who we have on the show tomorrow? 
Wayne Gretzky. Do you know that name? How many of you are hockey fans? Yeah. I think he is only 21 years old. They say probably already. He is the greatest hockey player that has ever played the game. He has broke the scoring record uh, set by Phil Esposito. May, is, may score as many as 200 points this season. 100 go. Thank you very much. Do I hear 200? <laughs> he also broke another record. He's the only hockey player who has not lost a tooth. <laughs> Do you have anything to help me there? <laughs> you know, there are better fights at hockey games than there are in boxing. Sure. Uh, anyway, here's another late bulletin came in. The Ayatollah Khomeini. Remember him? Fun-loving guy that he is. Is desperate, apparently, for American money to finance Iran's war against Iraq. You believe that? I understand he wrote a letter to the president. Says, Dear Ronnie, you might remember me from the early Hollywood days when I worked under the name Gabby Hayes. He was not trying anything. You're in a good mood tonight. We got a great show for you. Um, Jane Pauley is on the show tonight. Now, Jane Pauley, young lady from... Uh, uh, Jane, as you know, comes on at the beginning of NBC's uh, schedule, and I come on at, at the end. We're sort of like bookends for the, for the black hole. Uh, a little, little humor there. Anyway, and a good friend of mine, and one of the most versatile, amusing actors I have ever seen in my life, Mr. Harvey Corman, is here, and you will meet, and you will meet a very talented young ventriloquist, who I believe won, uh, I saw it on television, it was the great American laugh-off, I believe, the comedy clubs around the country have this, Ron Lucas is here tonight, if you will enjoy tremendously, and anything else? Well, you can tell him if you wish. A famous visitor from the East. From the East? Yes. I wonder who that would be. Now a word from a brand new sponsor. We'll be right back. It is time now for that very important visitor from the East. The all-knowing, all-telling, all-showing, all-omniscient, the famous seer, sage, and soothsayer, and former Fruit of the Loom underwear model, Karnak the Magnificent. Great and sage. Sim Salabim. Yes. <laughs> so happy you are here with us tonight. Karnak, very happy to be here. Yes, more than you can believe. I hold... <laughs> I hold in my hands the envelopes. A child of four can see these envelopes are hermetically sealed. They've been kept in a mayonnaise jar in Funk and Wagnall's port since noon today. No one knows the answers inside these questions, but you with your divine and borderline mystical way will ascertain the answers whatever hearing the question. Here is envelope number one. If you've left this any time, yes. <laughs> May I have silence, please? Yes. <laughs> Carnap will determine the answer to yes. this question. Hermetically sealed. Of course, it's, I've not seen it. Mayonnaise jar. You know that. Kermit the... Today. Kermit the Frog. Donald Duck and Minnie Pearl. Kermit the Frog, Donald Duck, and Minnie Pearl. Name three entertainers who know more about foreign policy than Ed Asner. A million dollars worth of foreign aid. A million dollars worth of foreign aid. What is Fernando Valenzuela's agent asking for? <laughs> 
That queasy wabbit. <laughs> what did Barbara Walter say when she failed her pregnancy test? <laughs> Snow and David Stockman. Name two things that will be gone by spring. <laughs> Magnum P.I. How do you say I really got to go to the bathroom in Latin? Traces of silver. Traces of silver. Oh, shut up. <laughs> what do you find behind the Lone Ranger's horse? <laughs> Unemployment and Princess Di. <laughs> Name two things that are getting big in England. <laughs> Iwo Jima, Vietnam, and El Salvador. What did Alexander Haig name his children? <laughs> VWD. Name a social disease you can pick up from a German car mechanic. Hosni Mubarak. Describe the sound made when an Egyptian cow sneezes. <laughs> Hosni Mubarak, you got it. <laughs> I'd like to thank all the little people. What did Snow White say on her wedding night? <laughs> Arnak headed into Lebanese litter box. <laughs> First you hang a left, then you hang a right. How does Lonnie Anderson climb out of the bathtub? <laughs> I hold in my hand the last envelope. May your only son lose his fortune in a yak palimony suit. <laughs> Dr. Pepper, Barney Miller, and the social security system. Name a pop, a cop, and a flop. <laughs> okay, tonight we have on the show. We have uh, Jane Pauley, who is the love... Boy, she's a talented lady. Mm -hmm. She will be out later to join us. She, of course, co-anchors the um, Today Show. Ron Lucas, very clever young ventriloquist. And this gentleman, whom I admire. He really gets... feels very awkward when you compliment him. But he is, he is a superb artist, and I mean that. Yes. Uh, actor, comedian, uh, who's going to star in a television movie called Eunice with Carol Burnett. That should be dynamite. Mm -hmm. They finally put that together as a movie. It's going to air March 15th from 9.30 to 11 p.m. It doesn't say on what network. Maybe it's here. 
No, if it had been a here, chance. they would have said here. We got a chance in three, one out of three. No, we're so, uh, showing, I think, that night, Jacques Cousteau goes in search of the killer clam. I guess, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, but dynamite. Would you welcome <laughs> lovable Harvey Corman? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very curious. Would you would you oblige me by a show of hands? Do I seem taller in person than I do on television? How many of you think I look shorter in person than I look on television? How many of you don't give a damn? Well, uh, what a, well, what a dynamite stand-up. General, thank you. Now, stand up a second. I want him to show us. I, well, I want to, I like to be there. You know they, why? They, they, look, that look. spot where you do the monologue. You don't think he is tall? But yeah. I'm shrinking. I'm only six, two and a half. When you get older, you shrink. Right. Do you really? Oh, yes. yes. I've lost a half an inch. <laughs> <laughs> you folks may make up your own joke. Right. <laughs> One of the reasons I wanted to go to that spot is that it almost has kind of a religious significance for me. You have died and returned and died and returned and died. <laughs> it's almost like visiting a shrine. Isn't it, though? <laughs> Johnny, before we go any further... Sure, Harv. The taller, shorter thing belongs yeah. to Tim Conway. He does that. That's his bit. Uh -huh. He does it in his nightclub act. And he accuses me of going around town on television of doing his act. So I, I want to dedicate that bit. I want to acknowledge him. That is his. Right. And I want to dedicate my entire appearance on The Tonight Show to Tim Conway. To Tim Conway. Conway. So is there anything in here that's just toastable? Yeah, no. So Tim, if they haven't taken your television set away, honey, <laughs> this is to you. To Tim Conway, uh, the man. The man, the myth. The, the myth. And the legend. The legend and to his career, what's left of it. Yeah. Well, as you know, I'm putting him on, but I mean, his career is okay. It's resting a little bit now, but it's... <laughs> he is one of the funniest men, if not the yes. funniest men in the world. I, I really believe Spending that. Spending time with him is... Didn't you hear the fine introduction I gave you? Superb, I believe you called me that. Superb? A superb artist. Thank you, sir. That's true, you are. No. I don't, really don't know how to take those. I really don't... I, I, I saw Jane Pauley before I came out, and she paid me a great compliment. I don't... I don't give what I do very much value. I'm Why afraid. is that? I don't know. I'm sick and disturbed. <laughs> well, I know that, but I mean, still. When people... Let me tell you about Tim. I'd rather talk about Tim. I've got to tell you what happened to him last week in I this... I could have asked him here, you know, if I wanted to talk to Tim, but... No, go ahead. Now I've, now you, now I've, now I've put you off, and I, I noticed it. Gosh, your eyes are blue. I know. <laughs> Anyway, believe this, this happened for true this week in a department store in Los Angeles. He is in the men's section of a department store going through a rack of jeans. And he's standing there and he's going through the rack. And an old lady, about a 65-year-old lady, comes up to him and says, Excuse me, where are your jockey shorts? And he says, Right here. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. He would do that. He said if she would have said, where are the jockey shorts, that could have been... A, but he says, where are your, your jockey, jockey shorts? He had to tell her. <laughs> right. Do you, uh, do you hang out with him quite I a bit? I hang out as much as I can. It is great fun being with him. Yeah. I got to tell you, about, in November, about a week or two before Thanksgiving, he was over at my house, and we were sitting around, you know, just getting bombed. Ooh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I know you don't want to talk about that. But something, it did happen to me once about 10 years ago. Yeah. I was stopped in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they stopped me. And, uh, <laughs> and I said, I am not drunk. I, I'm not, I have been very careful. I, I was, I know I wasn't speeding. And he says, I know you weren't. You weren't doing anything. You were just hanging out in the middle of the road. 
And he said, hey, Charlie, look who I got here. He says to a guy in the car, look who I got here. Uh, what's his name from the Burnett show? <laughs> and he says, I can't give you a ticket for a big star like you. So would you just <laughs> give me an autograph for my wife? So anyway. <laughs> You, you, you got off with an autograph. I'm going to the chair. I'm on a, you. We'll be right back so Harvey can cheer me up some more right after this. Wasn't that Not that's good. Wasn't that good? We're talking with Harvey Corman, actor, raconteur. Big tipper. Big tipper and all those things. And anyway, to finish that story about Thanksgiving, it was yeah. a, a week before Thanksgiving, and I had called my ex-wife, and we were trying to plan what to do on Thanksgiving, because we like to have it together. The children and her ex, uh, right. my, uh, my uh, her husband, my ex, her... So, <laughs> she said, well, okay... You get together with her ex-husband also? Oh, yes. I like him very much. He's on this network, as a matter of fact. He's on McLean's Law. His name is George DiCenzo. Huh. And That's he is her current husband, and I love him. He's a great guy. Anyway, we're all, we like to be together on Thanksgiving. So he said, where are we going to have it this year? She says, well, I think I can make it this, this year, and I can, uh, it'll take me about two days to do it, so I won't be able to come to your golf tournament, which I have in November. Right. I says, so Tim was listening to this. He says, it's going to take her two days to do a turkey dinner. He ran out. This was about 6 o'clock. He ran out to the market, brought back a turkey and pie and fresh cut flowers. We had a turkey dinner at 12.30 that night. He just had to prove her wrong. <laughs> he did cook the turkey at 500 degrees, so we had turkey tartare. <laughs> he is wonderful. He's just such yeah, a great crazy. guy to hang around. You know, you know when you get a, uh, together with funny guys, right? He, like, we get together with a guy, he and a guy named Ron Clark, who's a writer, right. and we just take premises, as you know, right. and just... Now, we had a premise the other night that went on for a half hour. Did you read the newspaper about the lady who was on the airplane and trying to smuggle cocaine through, and she ha swallowed 50... And she died from it. Yes, yeah, she swallowed 50 balloons full of cocaine, and evidently one of them inflated and, yeah. and burst, and she overdosed and died. This was your comedy premise? <laughs> Well, the premise had to do with the people on the receiving end. The people, their consternation when she didn't sure. arrive. And, and, and even the consternation if she did arrive, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really want to labor that anymore. Mm -hmm. But you do know that this is, for many years, a device where, where drugs are brought in and out of prisons and everything I by so. putting it down the digestive tract. I would think that would be... Uh... And then the recovery and all that stuff. So we, don't, we don't really want it. But anyway, he did 30 minutes on that. Which... On somebody who had bought some of this? Well, no, we don't want to really go any further. I guess we don't. But guess we don't. most of the stuff, I mean, I am lying on the floor laughing, and, but we can't talk about it here, and I'm sorry I brought it up. You just kind of do, you kind of just do lead-ins here, and then, and then that's it. I, are you being cross with me now? No, 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 I'm not, I'm not cross. All right, let's change the subject. Okay, I am going I'll to... Tell you, what? Tell you what I'm going to do. I found this in my desk that had been sitting there. You can look at the pages, how yellow they are. I don't know what it's from. I guess it's from a, a questionnaire from people filling out a job or something, or just to find out about it. And since I know you so well, it's difficult to just sit and ask you questions. And so I, I looked at some of these here, for example. Okay. Um... Well, these aren't too good either. <laughs> Looking at your career, what would you uh, most like to be doing 20 years from now? I think I'll be in the home. <laughs> One weekend they'll come with a pickup truck and they just... <laughs> no, what would you like to be doing 20 years from now? Oh, just to be alive to see my children and my grandchildren and be able to get up in the morning and have breakfast and go play golf. Smell the flowers. And... Smell anything and... Uh... <laughs> Well, okay, uh, that's a, that's a, that's and I, you know what I really, you know what I'd love to do is be able to make a difference in the world, to be able to yeah. participate and to and to be of service to you people. You have made I'm, a difference in the world. I still, yeah, that's really that's what you I see, like you to don't, do. You see, you don't think so, but you have made a difference in the world. How have I made a difference to you? I think by entertaining and bringing laughter and joy to people, that yeah. makes a big difference in the world. It does. I it think that's a, a very important. <laughs> you know, if people laugh, and you make them happy. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That sometimes is better than lots of other things, you know? Yeah. You entertain people. They sit at home, and they, they watch you, and they have a good time, and you've made their life 
That's true. That's, that's not true. bad. You don't but think about that, you see. I do, but I don't give it much value. I, you, I wanted, you want to discover something like, you want to be like Fleming, discover penicillin or something. No, right? but Is I, that what you're thinking? No, I don't want to discover penicillin. Well, of course, it's already been discovered. Oh. <laughs> that's why I don't want to do it. But I, I think there's other things we can do besides just making people laugh. Well, we, are just, we are something beyond just being actors and comedians. We're total human beings. We are members of the, of the world community. We, we are concerned with social issues. I and, know that. And social issues. Yes. Have you thought of ever running for... Why don't you run Right to public? life issues. Why don't you write Do you know it? what the latest Jewish position is on right to life? What is the latest Jewish position it on right to life? It is a fetus until it gets out of medical school. <laughs> I'm involved in stuff like that. I That's, know you That are. was just I a know joke, but... And I know what you're saying. Hunger. I'm devoted to ending hunger in this world. I'm going to Chicago Friday. I'm going to be doing a speech in Chicago uh, for the Association of Children with Learning Disabilities. Right. I'm going to London. I'm going to do a picture. Then I'm going to... Do, I, I'm doing a lot of stuff. I think that's great that you have other... Concerns. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go back to your thing. Well, uh, after that, I mean, this is this is nothing. <laughs> Ask me something really intimate. I'll give you the truth. I'll tell you the honest truth in what, front of everybody. What's your worst habit? <laughs> I think I pick my nose. Why did I ask that question? Why did I Especially ask? Especially when that I'm question? driving and you're at a stoplight and you're. <laughs> Some guy's looking over at you. Yeah. Hey, isn't that what's his name from the yeah? Serves no purpose whatsoever. I'm sorry. I'm. I suppose this is really a very well. This is this is in honor of Tim, anyways. So that's right. So you can. So blame. if I bomb tonight, it's blame that on him. It's Tim. You're going to London to make a picture. I'm going to London to do Pink Panther. Oh, great. They're going to continue those. Yes, you know, it's amazing. Did they get somebody to replace Sellers? That's Not job. replace Sellers. They have a new guy who's going to be kind of a bumbling detective. Right. But they have about 200,000 feet of unused Peter Sellers footage. Oh, he was so, so good. So they're going to have a they'll flashback, so they'll have a lot of Peter that Sellers. That would be sensational. Pictures. I'm playing a wonderful character, a German character named Dr. August Balls. And <laughs> that is the name of the you character. The yes, he sells disguises. He sells odd noses, unique goiters, carbuncles. <laughs> Would you like to see something in a hump? <laughs> a nice 42? Yes, a nice 42 hump. Yes, a nice hump. Okay, we're going to take a break here and... Uh, Can I leave now? No, no. Jane Paul is here, Ron Lucas. You stay right here. My next guest, I think you really enjoy it. I first saw this gentleman just a few weeks ago. He was on the uh, National Laugh-Off competition, which was on Showtime Cable TV. This is his first appearance, a uh, very clever ventriloquist. And tomorrow night, he goes into the cast of Sugar Babies in New York for an indefinite run. Would you welcome Ron Lucas. Ron? <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I'd like to share a few things with you. I want to show you how to build puppets. You see, it's very simple. All you need are a couple of socks and some rubber bands. The socks are part of my laundry. They stink. <laughs> Hola, senor. Como esta? Hola, senor. Como esta? Would you do me a favor? Si, senor. Would you count to ten? Si. Uh, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, six, oh, seven, oh, eight, oh, nine, oh, and ten, oh. <laughs> That's not the way it goes. Hey, man, I did not ask to try. You got to learn to adjust, okay? <laughs> What happened to the Spanish? I'm bilingual. I see. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm building a puppet. Can I help? Yeah, just keep talking. What do you want to hear? Can you do a short gag? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. That's, uh, <laughs> that's not what I meant. Well, you said I know what I said. What are you doing? I'm building a puppet. The sock on your head is hair, and the scarf is going to be a dress. A dress? A dress. A dress? You're not male. You're female. Oh, I am? <laughs> Are you playing on my tush? No, hang on, hang on. Let me get this tucked in. I can't see. I know that. I got some eyes for you. Don't rush me. I, oh, 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 hello. Oh, look. There's a lady sitting out there who's topless. There's nobody topless in the audience. Can you see her? You want the other eye? Go ahead. Can you see she's... <laughs> oh, my God. It's two bald-headed men sitting side by side. <laughs> Smile. Yeah, there you go. Why am I here? Oh, I got that. I got this little balloon right here. Let me straighten it out. Want to get kinky? What do you mean? Hurt me, hurt me, hit me harder, hurt me, I love it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, you laugh like you know what it means, uh-huh. 
you know what this is? A breathalyzer test? A... No. Why don't you... Why don't you just sort of look the other way while I do this? Okay, where? Over there. Where? Over there. Where? Huh? Right. Hit the nose. <laughs> How do you do that? I'm a honky. You're... Something else, please. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, while he does out, I'm going to sing a song. What? Are you ready on the count of three? We're going to do it the ABC song. Hit it, turkey, go! <laughs> this better work. Trust me. <laughs> hey, D, C, D, E, G, H, I, J, K, I, little T, Q, R, S, T, U, V, I have to take you apart. Oh, gonna get macho, huh? No, it's not what you think. Let me have the dress. You devil, you. Woo! Na, 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 na. Stop that. Na, 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 na. Oh, look. What? My tush looks like an elbow. Will you come here? Come here. <laughs> this is what you're about to become. Now count to three. You're kidding. Try it. Come on. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> there you go. Okay, now very quickly, because we're running out of time, tell everybody what your name is. Yeah. My name is George. I'm a turtle. <laughs> You're very slow. It's my job. <laughs> Where do you work? I work for the United States Postal Service. Right. In my third time, I polished my car. <laughs> Are you people wax? Huh, huh? Okay, 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 okay. So, okay. Say goodbye. What? I just got here. Say goodbye. No. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, no. What are you doing? You gotta go. No. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like to do for you right now at this time, I can't see. Ladies and gentlemen, elephant man. <laughs> no, 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 no. no give me that. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like to do... Right, excuse me, George. Yeah. <laughs> you have to say goodbye. Boy. Because I can't stand here and talk to a hand. <laughs> well, don't think of me as a hand. What are you? A naked puppet? No, say goodbye. <laughs> Can I wink at the lady? How are you gonna wink? You don't have any eyes. I, I took... I... <laughs> Come here. Yeah. You gonna call me if you need a hand? I prompt... <laughs> you don't understand. Oh, wow. She's cute. Hi there, but... Don't do that. Stop that. You're leaning on her head. I'm okay. Will you cut it out? Are you all right? I'm fine. Wait a minute, George. How about the foot? I'm all right. You guys. I'm okay, too. Uh, can I talk to the last guy? No, no, uh-uh. <laughs> I think I know him. I'm sure you... <laughs> George. George! <laughs> Will you please say goodbye? No, it's scary. No, it's not scary. You got, you got to say goodbye. Come on, please. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun, so... Good, 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 good. Bye, 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 bye. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Ron Lucas. That's really super. We'll be back in a moment with Jane Paul. Thank you, Ron. You know this young lady who is going to join us. She is the uh, lovely co-host of NBC's Today Show. She is originally from Indiana, and as this show is being seen, this is way past her bedtime. Would you welcome Jane Pauley? 
I automatically said good morning when you walked out. You know how funny it would have been if I had padded out here with little slippers on and my nightgown, little teddy bear tucked under and my arm. And the curlers I saw you with yeah, earlier? Yeah, I sometimes get out of bed this, this time of night, go get a drink of water or something. Yeah, this was a question I was wondering when you were in makeup, because you have to be at NBC at what time? Um, let me see. I get there at 5 o'clock in the morning. I write the first newscast. And, uh, you get this question all the my time. My fingers get up before I do. And, yeah, but this and really that. reverses your schedule. I remember the early days of radio. Totally. I, I don't know who she is. This is, you know, Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. Jane is sleeping. This is yeah. somebody else. Are you, <laughs> are you, she, are you a slow starter in the morning? I mean, does it no. take you time? Oh, no, 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 no. It's the uh, the adrenaline, the panic yeah. of, of, of knowing you've got to go do television and that people yeah. are going to be out there. And when I have a bad day, I share it with a few million people, as you do, too. How were you, you before? Oh, yes. <laughs> how, uh, how were you before you had that schedule, though? I, I'm a slow waker up. I, I, yeah. I do. People who jump out of bed and say, oh, wow, another day, and run around, I don't understand. Well, I never knew until I was Until I get out and have some person, coffee no. and read the paper, I am really not very human. Yeah. And I just wondered until you got on the schedule. I didn't know. I didn't know. Until you tried it. No, and on vacations, I still, I sleep in, and I try to get a real strong around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. What's bedtime really for you, normally? <laughs> no bedtime. Well, I mean, when you... Really, no, I just, it, it's so embarrassing to say that you go to bed before it's even in double digits. I go to um, 9 o'clock, 9.30... That's it. What a life. <laughs> ah, the glamour. You know, the 6 o'clock news is the late show yeah, for you, isn't I it? Yeah, I aspire to the 11 o'clock news, for sure. Yeah. You've been doing how many years now? It's been five and a half years. You come out of I'm Indiana. Yeah. Right in the Midwestern part of the country. Yeah, I love, by the way, I, I want to go home to your home. I want to go back to a hometown like you oh, got. When I did the special? Yeah. You know, if I went back to my hometown as you got to do, I'd have to have the nostalgic tour around... Eastgate Shopping Center, yeah. you know. Um, we don't, when you grow up, I, okay, I'm from the Midwest, and that's lovely, and, and, uh, and I do cherish it a lot, but not Smallville, USA. Right. Uh, there's not a lot of charm about the kind of suburbs that uh, most of us are growing up in these days, like yeah. over our shoulders. But your special um, was so evocative for me of a part of the Midwest that I only got to, to, to share one day a week in my childhood. Went yeah. back to the farm. My mother grew up on a farm, and my grandparents kept it, a, a real small, modest thing. This was not right. one of your ranchos. It was a real farm. Working farm. You're yeah, about. and it had, uh, your special was so wonderful in that it stirred up not just memories, but right. smells. When you were driving in that car of yours, I was smelling my grandfather's Studebaker. Um, oh, and I mean that. Smith, I know what you're talking about. You know about. what I mean? The, the, the way a wood... The, he I had think a, wood a smell can smell trigger good. emotion more than any other sense, oh, really. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I was talking about it. When I got back in the Midwest, I said, do they ever take a pile of leaves in the fall and burn them anymore? And they said, no, because anti-pollution now. Mm -hmm. But in those days, people would rake the yard. And in the fall, with a pair, a pair of leaves, I mean, a pile of leaves. <laughs> if you were poor, if you were poor, you had... If you were really poor, you'd have two leaves and... and Fire went just like that. You couldn't, you couldn't even get a weenie warm. I mean, it was just uh, fires out. But a pile of leaves—that smell. These is days they've got South American leaves. You only need two. Yes, that's them. A, you rub those together. You got a fire. Can I? I want to ask you something. Do you think, for many years, um, news, reporters, and so forth, was a male-dominated occupation? Yes, it was. Completely and basically still, pretty much. Although you, there are a lot of ladies in it now. Did you find? that there was, you came in there under more severe judgment or criticism as a lady in news than a, than a male counterpart would? Not Just at all. Just because the fact that you were not a woman? Re not really. Um, when I arrived, it was, uh, uh, two things were happening simultaneously. Uh, number one, the FCC, my motto was praise be to the FCC. Yeah. The FCC was encouraging the inclusion of women in newsrooms and blacks where, where right. there had been none. And also, someone figured out at about the same time it'd be a terrific ratings gimmick to get a girl on the news. And that's about what, that and the fact that I was also very inexpensive uh, for the people who hired me uh, explained why I was um, 
why I got in the business. But no, when you work in television, you don't work alone. It's not right. like going in to do an interview with Johnny Carson. I'm a print reporter and I've got a pad and a pencil. I don't travel light. No. I travel with light man and sound man and a cameraman, and the camera has NBC plastered along the side of it. And never mind whether I have credibility or not. Right. NBC does, and it's all that's the, the baggage right. I'm carrying. So women in television, I suspect, have had that that advantage. Yeah, well, you see women in sportscasters now, and a lot of the, I suppose, because of the male macho myth, they kind of resented certain ladies. Yeah. getting it to be sportscasters, saying, hey, that's c completely male, but it's really not, is it? Yeah, there was a time, um, someone who <coughs> you will be coming to know, uh, Reuven Frank, who is the oh, yes. new um, president of NBC News, a man who is legend Wasn't at NBC. Wasn't he one time president He's of NBC former, News? That's where, that's where I'm getting, and yeah. I think it was 1970, I know it was 1971, I looked it up. Yeah. <laughs> In August of 71, he said something that he recanted immediately after having said it, but he will go down in history as being the, the one who said that he didn't think the public would accept the news from a woman's voice. Um, and like I say, I know you took it back, and it, yeah. it obviously that's was really not what true, I meant but that's what, that was what the, the, the perception was, and a lot of women held it too. Yeah. But it, I don't think it uh, That's all was changing, all and true. good, because you are wonderful at your job. Well, I... You are really excellent, I, and there, I, a lot I, of other ladies are too, and so it's nice to see that. Thank you. What, what are some of the terrible things that have happened to you? <laughs> Because you're live. It, let's face yeah. it, not a lot of things have terrible have happened to me over the, but there are mistakes. When you, when you think of, uh, okay, people at home are looking at, at just Johnny. Right. Take my word for it, there are a few other people behind the scenes who make this engine run. But there are times when it doesn't matter how many uh, producers there are and how talented you the directors are, the are and whatever. We travel a good deal on the show. Uh, and there yeah. was one trip uh, to, um, to Mexico, three days. I, it, I see Freddie throwing a cue to the band because uh, obviously we have a little time problem here. Get the hook. Did you ever run into that problem? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I say, gee, you've been Talk. wonderful. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay where you are, folks. <laughs> Time. We just got started. Yeah. A lot of things I want to Are you going to be out here for a while now, or are you doing a, a story for the Today Show? Um, am I working? No. Yeah, this is vacation Heck no. time. no. I'm turning this into a field trip. I'll be back on the program. You could probably stay up at 11, 12 o'clock tonight, then. Devil may care, Jane. Whoopee. Hey, thanks for being here. My pleasure. So we never met before, and it's no. nice to admire your work. You look like my father. <laughs> <laughs> I'm humbled by that applause. 